So in this video here, we're going to talk about tips for model training. We're going to cover the different high parameters and so on, the optimizer, how you can choose the optimizer, the number of epochs, early stopping and so on. So these are just the best practices. Once we have our data set and we want to train our custom YOLO8 models or any other AI models out there. So let's just jump straight into the documentation. If you go inside the guide tab up here at the top and scroll down to the bottom, we then have this tips for model training. Over here to the right, we can see the table of contents. So let's just go over them and explain each individual one of them and the most common and the best practice that you should use for model training. So first of all, let's talk about how machine learning and deep learning model acts like it learns on a high level. So if you're doing update detection, instance segmentation and so on, we have our images, we throw it through a model and then we have our labels as well. So you need to label your data. We need to have our ground truth. Once we have our ground truth and we have our model predictions, we can just do a comparison and take the difference between what our model has predicted and what it should have predicted. Then we can take that loss, do some math, and then we can do the backpropagation. So we do the chain rule from math, backpropagate, and then we basically just take a look at the loss. How is the weight, each individual weight in our network? How is it affecting the loss? And then we just do our backpropagation go all the way from the output layer all the way down to the input layer again. We have our optimizer optimizing each individual weight depending on the optimizer that we're using, the loss and also our learning rate. So our learning rate basically just specifies how large depth do we want to take, how much do we want to change each individual weight in our network. If you just keep doing this over and over again, at the end our models would act like learn the data that we have so it just becomes better and better at predicting what we want our model to predict. So this is a high level overview over how machine learning and deep learning models are trained. So if you want to do training on large data sets, we need to know what a batch size is and also how we can use the GPU in the best possible way. So it could be that you have a single GPU, but also multiple GPUs. So you can actually take your model, take your large data set and train on hundreds of different GPUs out there if you have the resources, but most often one GPU is more than enough for a lot of use cases. So the batch size is basically just how many images do we want to take in the same batch, throw it through our model, we do our forward pass, we do our calculations with a loss at the end, then we do the back propagation and optimize our weights. So it could be that we have a batch size of 8, 16 and so on. So this is how many images we load into the GPU RAM at the same time, do all our passes, back again, optimize our models, and then we just keep doing that until we have been through our whole data set. So just take our whole data set and then we divide it into individual batches, throw all of that through a model, and then we train our model like that. And this is also how the models are learning. So often you'll use a batch size of 8, 16, 32, and so on. Just make sure that you're not running out of GPU RAM. We can also do subset training, so just take a very small subset of your training set, make sure that your models act like training in the correct way, that your high parameters and so on are tuned, and this is also very good just to save a ton of time instead of just spending like days or like hours training your model where you could just have taken a subset and then done some iterations and also some tuning based on that before you train on your full scale data set. We also have multi-scale training, which just means that if we have different objects at different distances, image sizes and so on that we want to generalize our model with. We can also specify the scaling parameters. Each of these parameters here can be set directly once we call the training method with Ultralytics. So we already have videos covering all of that with training, the whole computer vision pipeline, how we can take a data set, annotate it, basically just set up everything with Ultralytics. It's just a few lines of code and we can train our custom models. And these are all the arguments that you can find inside the documentation as well. Right now we can just set it to 0.5 and it will reduce the image size by half, but we can also double it with this scaling value here. So this is really good if you want to have taking in mid scales into account and basically just be able to detect different objects, different distances, object sizes, and also various scenarios. We can do caching. So this is basically just how we want to cache the images before it's sent into the GPU RAM. So it could be that you want to cache it on in the RAM or just have it on disk or we just set it to false here as well, where it's basically just going to rely entirely on the disk input output. So every time it's going to load in the batch, it's going to take it from disk. So if we set the cache equal to true, it will just load it into RAM instead. So that will be faster transfer speed, 
from the computer RAM, so the CPU RAM into the GPU RAM, back and forth, so we don't need to write and read from our disk every single time. We can also do mixed precision training, so it basically just means that we both train a model for 16-bit and also 32-bit. This is a pretty nice visualization. So we have our model here, we do our backpropagation, so we calculate the gradients of our loss for a floating point 16-bit model and also the floating point 32. Then we do our optimizer here or optimization step with the floating point 32 model. So we make sure that we don't lose any accuracy or any precision once we're doing the optimization steps for a model. And then we can always go down to our floating point 16 weights again once we do our forward passes. So this is also a very good way to do it. And we can just set amp equal to true in our training. So that enables automatic mixed precision. We can use pre-turn weights. So instead of initializing, every single weight randomly to start with. We can use pre-trained models, and this is probably the best thing to do in most scenarios, unless you have a very large scale data set, you have a lot of processing power and also a lot of time. So probably take a few days and so on to train everything from scratch on thousands of images, compared to if you're just using pre-trained weights from the Coco data set, you can just fine tune it on your own data set and only require a few hundred images. And then you have a model within an hour or so, you're good to go can use it in your own applications and projects. So we can also take a look at some other techniques to consider when handling a large data set. So it could be a learning rate scheduler. You start with a higher learning rate, basically just to learn more with your model to start with, and then it will decrease over time. So we basically just make sure that we're not overfitting, but we don't want our model to learn as much in the later stages of our epochs. Could also be distributed training, so if you have multiple GPUs available. We also have some tips for the number of epochs that you need to train for. And normally you can just go with 300 epochs to start with, then you can always change it depending on the high parameters, how your losses are converging, the mean error position and so on. When you're looking at that, you can always implement early stopping. So that just means that if you take a look at the graph, we just stop once our model is not improving any longer. So often we will take a look at the error. We don't want our model to overfit. So if we don't stop the model training, at some point our model would act like overfit to our training data and it won't be able to generalize well to our validation set and also test set. And we don't want that when we take a model and put it into production. So we want our models to generalize. We can do the early stopping both to save time, but also GPU resources as well. So this is a really good technique to implement. So it doesn't really matter how many epochs, it will stop once the model is not learning any longer. Also best practices and tips for choosing between cloud and local training, depending on what you have available, the scale of your data set and so on. And also if you want to be able to have greater control, customizations and so on, Google Cola notebooks are a very good option. If you just want to train some smaller models, could also just be that you want to have everything local with your own data, then you can just train it on your own GPUs. Just make sure that you have a GPU available when you're training locally or it'll take a very long time depending on the number of images that you have. We also have the optimizers here. The most standard one is the Atom optimizer and the most common used one. There's different variations and all of that for pretty much all of them out here. But this Atom optimizer is pretty awesome and it combines both the benefits of SGD, which is stochastic gradient descent and RMS prop. You can go and read more about it if that's interesting, but you should probably just go with the Atom optimizer in most cases. And this is also the default optimizer that we're using to train the Autolytics optimizers because again, it's efficient and it generally requires less tuning. So you don't really have to tune the learning rate too much and also all the momentums and so on. It just works out of the box. So these are some tips for model training and also just best practices. So make sure that you take these into account. Make sure that you know what each of these individual ones means because it can save your ton of time. It basically just makes sure that you train the best models out there for your own problems in your own projects and applications. So I hope you learn a ton. Definitely go and check it out. Play with it in a Google Colab notebook. Once you're training your models, try out different optimizers, implement early stopping, try to play around with the number of epochs and so on, but also just to specify the correct batch size. If you want to use caching, mix precision and so on, what that means, it's also good practices to do. So thanks a lot for watching this video here, guys. Make sure to check out all the other videos that we have on the channel. We have pretty much everything out there covering every single aspect of it and also inside the documentation. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning.